will come uh, from Köln in Germany. He is called uh, Philip Stars and he will speak about open source uh, backup with uh, Barreros, uh, an alternative to uh, Bakula. Let's applause Philip. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, yes, I am one of the uh, founders of the Barrios project, and um, in my talk, I would uh, like to tell you um, why we did. Uh, so first, what what is Barrios? Um, why we did a fork um, of Becula, because forking is a lot of work and usually if you have an open source project that uh, develops normally then you can just uh, work with the, the normal project leader to get, uh, to get the project forward instead of forking it. Um, then I would like to show some feature highlights, uh, what we uh, made better than the original project. Um, um, then I would like to um, stress that we uh, really do have a, a stringent open source uh, philosophy in our project. And uh, finally, uh, of course, we are here to find also people that want to participate in the project, maybe by uh, bringing in ideas, uh, documentation and um, code, of course, whatever is uh, needed in, in an open source project. So first, what is Barrios? Barrios is a network-based multi-platform backup solution. It's a, a fork of uh, Becula. Becula is, I think, well known in the open source market and is, I think, the um, biggest uh, open source backup product uh, known. Um, what uh, it's uh, licensed under, under the AGPL, which uh, is, uh, of course, the same uh, what the uh, open source specular code already is. Um, what we did with it is we did a lot of code cleanup um, of the original specular code because there are a lot of things that we think are not needed anymore. And um, our complete source code is hosted at GitHub, at GitHub so uh, that everybody can download it. And um, yeah, that's... Uh, that's it. Um, why did we the fork of, uh, of Becula? Um, I, um, I have some numbers of OLO. Um, I think everybody knows OLO. They analyze the source code of open source projects. And um, if you have a look at the Becula page, then you see um, first on uh, very low activity, which is um, I think um, absolutely true because uh, I think uh, the last commit was done more than a year ago and if you see that uh, in the last 12 months compared to the year before uh, you have 88% less commits and 57% less contributors so uh, that looks for like a project that more or less is dead and you also can see here the, um, the plot of the commits per month and you see that uh, 2014 uh, it expects that there will be nothing Thing. So um, that's the reason. It's one of the reasons uh, that we forked Becula. Um, a second reason is that there's a commercial part of Becula, and uh, this one is not open source anymore. So um, something that we think it's not acceptable because uh, usually if you have an open source project, you bring your contribution to it because you know it still stays open and if somebody then takes it and makes another product of it or you just have an open core product that's no open source anymore. <coughs> um, yeah, what's, what's the goals uh, of our fork? Yeah, um, we want to have it 100% free software, so we uh, absolutely promise that we will not do something like they do, so um, our code will always be completely open. Um, we want to have a continuous development so that the, um, the um, project is, uh, is not dead but alive and working and we adapt to the needs that are out there uh, at customers and as users. We um, try to be compatible to Becula as far as possible, at least in the beginning, because there's already a relatively big uh, installation base out there, and if we want to uh, if we want people to use our project, of course, it must be easy to switch to our product, project. So that's the reason why we try to at least have a smooth uh, transition to our project, and that's uh, something that is uh, definitely easy uh, doable today. Um, uh, what else we did is uh, we cleaned up the configuration engine because everybody that used Becula um, knows that it's quite complicated to set up. There's a lot of options to set and um, we try to um, 
clean up uh, what has to be configured, what not, and what has uh, what can be already uh, um, set with a default that is somehow uh, um, how do you say it? They're logical or uh, most people need it in that way. Um, next, I would like to um, explain some feature highlights that we have and that Becula uh, does not offer. Uh, one of them is the SD-SD replication, so uh, SD stands for storage daemon. Um, the, the Becula and the Varios system um, consists of three types of uh, programs or daemons that are running. Um, the, uh, the intelligence uh, lies in the director daemon. The file daemon is what other backup uh, software uh, vendors call client. And the storage daemon is the daemon um, is a part of the software that writes data to storage uh, devices, for example, tapes or disks, and reads it back on restore. Um, what we are now able to do is we can um, replicate a backup done to one storage daemon over the network to another one, which uh, enables um, us to uh, copy it over to another building or something, which um, Becula is not able to. Um, on Becula, you have the restriction that the two storages that you want to migrate from uh, from and to have to be connected to the same storage daemon computer so you it's only more or less uh, possible to uh, replicate it locally <coughs> um, second uh, new feature that we have in barrios and one of those i think are um, most important and helps uh, um, administrators very much to use it is um, the so-called passive client. The, uh, the usual way of, um, of initiating a backup uh, runs um, goes that way. The director con contacts the storage daemon and um, tells the storage daemon that there will be a backup soon from the file daemon. Then the file daemon is contacted and told to which storage daemon to, um, um, to send the data and the file daemon then initiates the connection to the, um, to the storage daemon. Um, this has uh, a lot of drawbacks. One is if you have a firewall or a NAT device, then um, you cannot directly access the storage daemon from the file daemon, but you need to um, create an additional port forwarding or, um, or things like that. Also, often in the, um, in, in the companies, uh, you have the problem that the file daemon outside or behind the firewall does not have the same um, name resolution, which then um, uh, makes, uh, which then leads to a file daemon that cannot connect to the uh, storage daemon. Um, with the passive client option, we uh, simply reversed the initiation of the data channel. So that means that now instead of uh, the file daemon connecting through the firewall to the storage daemon, um, the connection is set up the other way around. And that solves uh, all the problems um, that we had before. This means that um, the file daemon does not need any um, name resolution anymore. Uh, and the firewall uh, device does not need any uh, extra configuration, so it's much easier for setup. Um, a third uh, feature that we have in Barrios um, is uh, that we support the LTO drives hardware encryption. Um, since LTO version 4, every uh, tape drive um, has an um, included hardware encryption uh, option. So everybody that has a modern LTO drive has the uh, opportunity already in his hardware. And uh, we are now able to use it. So you can, at full speed, um, um, encrypt your backups on tapes um, and uh, Barrios is able to create and manage all those um, all what is needed to use it. So every tape is uh, encrypted with a, with a tape specific key. Um, yeah, what uh, what is our open source strategy? So um, the whole software is AGPL uh, version 3 licensed. Um, the founders of the uh, Barrios project all are um, uh, long, uh, yeah, how do we say, uh, for a long time already are working in the open source um, business. So uh, we, we uh, like open source very much and we think that's the right way to do things. 
uh, we do not have any venture capital, which uh, means that we can decide ourselves wh what we want to do and wh what we do not to do, uh, not to do, and we are not uh, driven to make uh, a certain amount of money in a certain amount of time. So that's what we see in other companies that are, have venture capital. They uh, they are driven uh, just to make money, and they don't do the right decisions in the uh, in the project. As I already said, the um, source code of uh, Barrios is on GitHub. It's on github.com slash Barrios. So um, we, everything that we have in our project is there. So you can check it out and uh, look into it. Um, the source code uh, is there. We have also uh, regression tests on the source code that we run. Those are also in a uh, sub-branch of our repository. And the documentation is also there. So um, everything is open. I think um, yeah, what we also have is uh, uh, Doxygen is a source code documentation um, tool and we automatically um, run it on our source code so that um, you, if somebody wants to dive into the code and see what it does or what is called from where you can easily um, um, l get used to the code by uh, reading the docu documentation. So I hope that uh, somebody uh, of you, uh, some people are interested in our project and if you want to contribute to our project, um, you can go to the Barrios.org website. There's a how-to article where most things are uh, explained, where you can contact us. Um, we have two uh, user, uh, users and a development group on Google Groups. We have a, a bug tracker on bugs.barrios.org and uh, the source code is at GitHub. Yeah, if, uh, I, I will answer, uh, of course, now questions as long as I have time for that. But yeah, yeah, have small time. of course, we, have, we are here. Uh, we have a stand in building K level 2, uh, where you can come over and talk to us. And of course, everybody that's wearing a t-shirt like I do uh, is part of our project. So you can ask them any time. Uh, two of them are sitting there. So just ask us. OK, I'm through. So questions, please. Uh, yes, what is the state of uh, B pipe in uh, Berrios? Uh, what do you mean with state? We, do, we have it, it's compiled and, and in the packages. Does it work? Uh, are there success stories uh, of B pipe? Yes, it works. Okay, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> another question? We have another question. Hi. So um, I'm very curious about the performance of uh, Barrios. Uh, can you tell me something about it? Do you have benchmarks or metrics how it performs in a, on a great scale? So what we do, um, I, I have a, um, a tape tuning white paper. I, we, we, uh, we tested the tape um, speeds and the standard block size of Bacula is very slow and if you uh, increase yes. the block size uh, it gets much faster and on the website of Barreos uh, there are uh, all the tests that I did and the analysis of that. Can you, uh, f um, how is it with the throughput of the network? Uh, can you fill that? Sorry. The, thru the network right. throughput. Can you tell me something about that? Sorry, did not uh, the, the network. throughput through the network. Throughput. The network, yes. Um, yeah, the network throughput is uh, as fast as the network works, so it's it's not limited by by Barrios itself. Usually, usually um, the client is not fast enough to uh, to find the files and to send them over the network. But uh, Barrios itself is not the network bottleneck. Yeah. Usually, I have one unrelated question, if that is possible. So, how do you solve the uh, directories with a million of files, and you need to backup them, like a million of small files? You, I think, you know the, the problems with that. Yeah, if it gets too big right now, um, in the end, it's uh, we, we do the um, enumeration of the files. Uh, we, we just call a systems uh, call in the end, and if that takes too long, we cannot do nothing about that. So that's uh, we don't have a ready solution for that. Okay, thank you. No problem.
There has been a nice feature request list on the Bacula website for sitting for years without anything moving on it. One of the two things are actually related to the performance issues that the person over here asked about. One is the multi-threaded file daemon for reading up the files from the file system. When you have large uh, repositories with small files, you're simply not saturating the underlying storage device. Uh, another one is to be able to spool and despool concurrently. At the moment, the system simply just sit around waiting for pausing data from the client while it's pulling to tape. Are there any plans to do changes in these areas? Um, right now, not uh, not concretely, but uh, we, in the bug tracker we also have uh, feature requests, so if you have uh, ideas of things that should be uh, done better, please uh, file them there. Thank you for your talk.